In the enigma of the abandoned slaughterhouse, follow two daring photographers on a journey through eerie, long-forgotten places in Virginia. When they stumble upon a hidden basement beneath a derelict slaughterhouse, curiosity drives them deeper into a mystery they were never meant to unravel. Unnerving discoveries and a sense of foreboding haunt their exploration, leaving them with chilling questions and an unshakable feeling that they witness something beyond explanation. Around 2011 to 2015, my old friend and I embarked on daring photo expeditions to abandoned places scattered across the vast expanse of Virginia. If you browse through the top upvoted Reddit posts from that era, you'll stumble upon many photographs taken by my buddy and me. These photographic journeys, while thrilling and fruitful in terms of imagery, came to a halt due to a series of close encounters with law enforcement and security personnel. Nonetheless, those days left us with an astonishing portfolio of pictures and an abundance of captivating stories. I would wholeheartedly recommend Urban Exploration, or Urbex, to anyone with a passion for the post-apocalyptic or burgeoning photographer seeking inspiration from the darker side of life. However, this endorsement comes with a caveat, there are derelict properties out there that may seem fascinating but aren't worth the risks they pose. If a place appears too perilous or inaccessible, there's no shame in passing it up. My caution doesn't stem from personal injury, but from a haunting experience that still haunts my thoughts after all these years. The story begins in July of 2013 when my friend texted me about an abandoned slaughterhouse nestled in the middle of nowhere. My interest was immediately piqued, as a slaughterhouse was a top-tier location in our quest for the eerie and macabre. It promised haunting visuals, from ominous meat hooks to potential bloodstains. We drove to the location, found it surprisingly unguarded, parked our car, and entered the compound. Initially, the place seemed unremarkable, with a couple of buildings resembling animal sheds. But as we explored deeper, we stumbled upon the machinery room with its intricate mechanical innards and then the incinerator, which I promptly photographed. The actual slaughtering areas lacked dramatic bloodstains, but the grates designed to drain blood exuded a creepy aura. Then came the chilling discovery, the cooling room, complete with the Texas Chainsaw-style meat hooks. We took numerous pictures there, and after our photo session, we decided to call it a day and head for some fast food. However, as we were leaving, curiosity got the better of us, and we decided to take one last walk around the building. That's when we found the basement. A stone stairwell led to a massive iron door with a small window framed by iron bars. The only thing securing it was a rusted padlock. I, motivated by professional curiosity, hesitated to break in, but my friend was driven by the thrill of exploring creepy places. He eyed the padlock, then me, with a mischievous glint in his eye. I vehemently opposed the idea of smashing the padlock, as my desire for a spicy deluxe at Chick-fil-A far outweighed breaking and entering into a possibly perilous basement. We compromised, we would return another day with the proper tools and in the early morning light to explore what lay beneath. A week or so later, my friend, always resourceful, acquired a sledgehammer and a pair of bolt cutters. We returned to the site, broke the lock, and creaked open the door, revealing a long, dark corridor leading to several rooms. We cautiously ventured in, equipped with headlamps, and despite our initial concerns about snakes, we proceeded deeper. The first room contained old wooden furniture, resembling classroom desks and chairs. Odd for a slaughterhouse, we thought, but plausible for training purposes. The next room held a jumbled mess of half-rotten notebooks and papers, appearing as if someone had ransacked a library. The presence of a smashed ham radio added to the mystery. But it was the third room that sent shivers down our spines. It contained cages, tall and narrow, more reminiscent of jail cells than anything meant for animals. It was at this point that our unease escalated, and we contemplated leaving. 
However, an inexplicable compulsion pushed us to explore further. In the final room, we discovered a stack of respirators and blue plastic chemical drums. The sight of these drums, though filthy, indicated recent human activity. We couldn't dismiss it as merely a relic of the past, and the realization struck that we might have stumbled upon something we weren't supposed to see. As we left the room, the weight of our discovery began to sink in. We toyed with the idea of contacting the police to report what we had found. However, fear of incriminating ourselves in the break-in restrained us. Anonymously calling 911 seemed the only option, and while we yearned for closure, we had to live with the unsettling knowledge that we might never discover the truth about what occurred in that basement. The years passed, and news headlines never revealed the secrets of that slaughterhouse basement. While I want to believe there's a rational explanation for it all, a haunting sensation lingers, suggesting that something horrific transpired there, something we were never meant to witness.